Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, I want to show you an issue I'm running into as I build the front end for our contacts list API that we built in the previous videos. So right now I'm working on a React app to consume the API, but when I try to make an any API request to the deployed application on Heroku, this is what I get. So for example, if I type Christ truly and then I put a password like password, and then click login you will notice that the request fails and i'm unable to connect to the server for example yeah if we actually investigate this request so i'm gonna go to the network tab and then here you can see that we we don't connect to the server at all so the reason for that is that by default django doesn't allow other domains to connect to the web server normally so what we need to do is set up a cores policy for a web server to allow requests from other domains to be able to access certain resources on the on our API server. So what you're gonna do, so we are going to use this module to be able to define a cores policy and allow our web server, our API server to accept requests from our local host domain. So what you're gonna do is here, if you come to this documentation, they show you how to set it up, they show you how to use the, the middleware, and then they show you how to configure the whitelist. So the whitelist would be the list of other domains that you would want to make the requests to your API. So what you're going to do is you're going to install this and then be able to set up this. But when we look at the documentation more, you're going to see that you can also define the whitelist using a regular expression. So this can be useful in cases where you're making requests from subdomains and you would want all subdomains of that domain to be able to access the resources on the API server. Also, if, if we look at here, we can also set up the, the options we allow other other domains to, to do regarding the resources we have on our, on our server. So we also can, def, can allow all origins to access the, the web server although it's not, it's generally not a good idea. So yeah, so let's go ahead and use this and see how we can solve our issue. So first of all, you are going to need to install it. So I'm going to copy this here. So in our application, I'm going to run pipenv, install Django calls headers. So once it installs, we need to add it to our installed app section. So I'm going to come to settings. And then in the installed apps, I'm going to add it here. So now we also have to you to add a middleware. So of course you could define your own middleware and actually you configure this stuff from scratch yourself. This module is highly popular and it's actively maintained. So it's something you can rely on to to handle these kinds of things. So I'm going to set up the middleware. So here, I'm gonna scroll to middleware section. And then here, I'm going to bring in the middleware, cause middleware. So once we are done here, now we need to set up our whitelist. So if we take a look here, see we can set up origin whitelists. So I'm gonna copy this one. Down here we can, let me set up the comments. I'm gonna do cause. I'm gonna bring in this. So now we can define the domains that we would want to allow on the server, to allow to request resources on our server. So right now we are working with localhost port 3000. So I'm gonna keep localhost port 3000. So if you have more, let's say you have like a file server and then maybe you, you have a server and then you're storing images on a separate file server, you can also add it here such that it can always communicate back and forth with, with your with your API server. So that's just an example, but I'm going to now leave localhost because that's the only use case we have for it for now. So I'm gonna leave that and then I'm going to commit this. So git add dot git commit minus m. So I'm gonna say ch course allow localhost for dev so now i can push these changes to github and once i'm done now i can go and redeploy on heroku so here i'm gonna go to our application on heroku i will reload here so i'm going to come to the deploy section then i'm going to choose a branch let's see which branch is here oh yeah so i'm going to redeploy i'm actually going to trigger a redeploy 
So I'm going to redeploy master. So now it's going to start redeploying. But right now as it deploys, we still have the previous version on that server. So if I come and try it here again, you can see that we still can't fetch and forget that the loading indicator going away. We will be working on that. So you can see that we still can't fetch. Basically, there is nothing we can do. The server is not responding to us at all. Let's wait for the deployment to deploy the new changes. So it has actually finished. Let's wait for it to finish properly. So now you can see that it has finished deploying. So I'm going to come and, uh, and make another API request. So now I'm going to try the same thing. This. So now you can see that I get the, the details from the server. So you see, we get the response for all one. So now we are able to we are able to communicate to the server by adding local host to the core's white list on the web server. So that's going to do it for the video. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. I'm working on the React front end for this. I will be also posting videos about that. So if you're interested in that kind of content, consider subscribing to the channel, and I'll see you then.